Hey, I'm Allison. I'm a literacy specialist for K2, and I have a blog called Learning at the Primary Pond. And if you follow my blog, then you might know already that every Saturday, or many Saturdays, I put up a new blog post. And what I've started to do recently also is um, come on here on Facebook Live every Monday around 4.30 Central Time and just share with you a little bit of behind the scenes information about the blog post, get your ideas, get your feedback, just chat with you a little bit more. And, and this is also a great place for everyone to share ideas with each other. So with that in mind, I wanted to talk about the topic of this past week's post and the title of that was Five Strategies to Try When You Feel Frustrated by Your Student's Behavior. And just a little bit of background on why I picked this topic. Well, first of all, it's um, November, and in the United States here, I know a lot of teachers around this time are getting extra busy and also, um, you know, just maybe getting a little bit frustrated by their class's behavior. The kids get a little bit more out of control at this time of year. So give me a like if you can identify with that. So that's one reason why I decided to um, write the post. But another reason just is I think it's important to get it out there that if you feel frustrated by your kid's behavior, it doesn't mean that you're a bad teacher. I think it happens to everybody um, at one time or another. And I honestly think that it's better that we get a little bit frustrated by our kids' behavior because that can motivate us to change things as opposed to if we just, you know, didn't care about how our kids were behaving at all. So I think it's very normal. It's something I experience. Um, give me a like or, or leave a comment if you feel the same way. So that was kind of my motivation in writing the post. And in the post, I listed five different strategies of basically things that I do when I am feeling frustrated by my students' behavior. So I'm gonna share four of them, and then I'm gonna go more in depth on, um, it was number two in the post, and this is this little chart that I created. So strategy number one, when I'm feeling frustrated by my kid's behavior is to focus on my own mindset. And a lot of us, you know, feel pressure, and we really want our kids to do well academically, literacy, math, science, social studies, right? That's why we're at school, that's why the kids are at school. But the kids are also at school to learn social skills. So when I feel extra frustrated that I'm just like not getting to teach what I want to teach or things aren't going smoothly, I have to remind myself that, you know, not only am I here to teach literacy as a literacy specialist or the other subjects, but I'm also here to teach kids social skills and appropriate behavior is just part of that. So for me, part of the solution when I'm feeling frustrated by my kids' behavior is just to remind myself why I'm here, kind of shift my mindset and view it as like teaching as opposed to disciplining or um, like managing behavior, so teaching social skills. So that was strategy number one. And then strategy number two we're gonna come back to, that we're gonna go more in depth on that one. The strategy number three in the post was just that I try something different. So the way I see it, if things aren't working the way I'm doing them, whether it's how I'm having the kids line up or you know how I'm responding to their behavior or how I'm putting them in groups. If something is not working, then it's my job to fix it. I don't wanna fix a million things at once because I kinda of wanna like tweak one thing and see how that works and then if that's going well, then you know I'll keep it. If I tweak multiple things at once, then I don't necessarily find out what is you know working best or what change worked the best for my kids. So I'll tweak one thing at a time. Doing the same thing and it over and over and expecting different results is probably not a good idea. So that's why that was strategy number three in the post. Um, strategy number four was devoting time to relationship building, right? So everything that we're doing in the classroom centers on relationships, how the kids feel about each other, how they relate to each other, how they feel about me, how I feel about them, how we relate to each other, like that all comes out intentionally or unintentionally. So if I'm finding that, you know, behavior is just not right on track, what I'll do is try to make extra time, and I do this anyway, but I'll just try to make extra time for like a short, fun activity that we all enjoy. So this can be something so simple, like after the weekend, we come and spend a few minutes sharing out what we did over the weekend. Um, you know, maybe we'll play a parachute game if we can. We play hot potato. It just takes a few minutes. I'll read them a silly book. 
maybe one person a week gets to do show and tell just or student of the week something like that let me know in the comments if you have other um, relationship building activities that you feel work really well with your kids I think in the post I may have mentioned morning meeting as well that is a practice and I think there's a whole book on it that I read a while back it's related to responsive classroom but that is just the practice of like getting kids ready for the day by you know socializing with each other and just building those relationships at the start of every day that's something that I feel is really valuable so that was strategy four and then strategy number five when I'm feeling extra frustrated with my kiddos is just that I try to do something nice for myself so you know whether I read for a few minutes in the morning just to kind of start the day calmly I like to use this um, app called, what is it? I'm forgetting the name now. I mentioned it actually in my other Facebook Live, but it's kind of like a mindfulness meditation app and it just kind of gets me in a good mindset, keeps me calm at the beginning of the day so that we can start the day right. Or I'll you know, like make some time for myself to go shopping or just do something nice for myself. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to take more than five minutes. But I found that if my, I call it my cup, if my cup is a little bit more full, then I'm able to bring into the classroom more positive energy, more patience, and that absolutely does make a difference. So thank you, Trisha. Yeah, if anybody else has any great strategies for building relationships or other activities, she said compliments, fill a classmate's bucket, Calm. Is, that, is it the Calm app, Trisha? I think that's what it's called. Headspace. There's Calm and there's Headspace. Headspace is the one that I use. I have used Calm before also. Both good apps, though. Those are just good for, like, getting centered and starting the day positively. Okay, so I said that I wanted to go more in-depth on strategy number two. And strategy number two is best when... It's not so much when you have like a ton, a ton of kids that are acting out or it's just crazy before the holidays, but this strategy is good when you have one kiddo or a couple of kiddos who are exhibiting this problematic behavior and it's happening repeatedly and you're not quite sure what to do about it. So the way I was talking about it in the post was to approach um, dealing with the behavior in using the scientific approach. So when I say scientific approach, I mean you are trying to study this behavior kind of like you're a researcher. And I think this works for two reasons. Number one, it helps you deal with your own like frustration around it, like stepping back and thinking about it more objectively. And then number two, it really does help you figure out, or it helps me figure out anyway, what might be the cause of the behavior and what I can do to fix it. So I love going about dealing with behavior problems like this, I think you'll find it's really interesting what you can find out from examining your kid's behavior in this way. So let's say you've got a kiddo who is um, pushing or you know being too physical with other kids. And this is something that's been going on for a while and you're not really sure what to do with it. So what I would do is just take a couple of days and like on your clipboard or whatever, put it can be a blank piece of paper or like a spreadsheet or something, but you want to use this piece of paper to track information about this problem behavior. So you really focus on that kid for a couple of days. You can also, if you have like maybe an instructional aide or if you have a social worker in the building, they can do this too because it can get a little tricky when you're trying to, you know, like write stuff down and still teach. But if you, you don't have that option, you absolutely can do this yourself. Um, I've done it myself. So here's what I do. I think about the problem behavior, and as we're going through that week, I try to notice a bunch of things. I try to figure out what happens immediately before the problem behavior. So before the little guy is pushing, um, you know, are we getting up from group? Are we getting in line? Does someone make him upset? Like what is happening immediately before the problem behavior. And I don't try to interpret it at that point. I just very objectively like what happened immediately before this behavior showed itself, right? Then I look at what happens after the behavior. So that might be a number of things. It can be my reaction. It can be what the kid does after. Is he laughing after he pushes someone? Um, is the child who was pushed crying? Like just objectively again, what happens immediately after the behavior? Okay, I also look at the time of day. So is it happening in the morning? Is it happening in the afternoon? Is it happening before lunch? Is it happening during transitions? A lot of kids have trouble with transitions. So we're done with literacy centers and we're moving on to whatever else. In that transition time, 
Is that when the problem behavior is happening? Is the child tired and it's happening toward the end of the day? Those are all things that you'd want to write down. Another thing to look at is where is it happening? Is it happening on the rug when you're all together? Is it happening at the kids' seats? Is it happening on the playground, in the hallway? Just write down every single time the behavior happens for a couple of days in a row, write down where it happens. Often there is some sort of pattern that you'll notice when you keep writing this down for multiple days. And then another big one to look at is the purpose. And this is this is more, um, I guess it, it's less objective than the other ones, but once you've got kind of this stuff written down, you can sort of start to begin to interpret the purpose of the behavior. So is the child trying to get your attention? Even if it's negative attention, some of our little friends still want that, right? Um, is the child trying to get other kids' attention? Is the child trying to avoid work? Maybe it's too hard, maybe it's too easy. Noticing like when and where the behavior happens, what happens before it and after it, that can help you figure out what the purpose of the behavior might be. Another thing to look at is right now, before you change anything, what are the consequences of that behavior? And that kind of goes along with purpose too, but are you having them sit by themselves? Are you um, talking to them in front of the class? Are you raising your voice? Like what is happening? What consequences either intended or unintended? Like maybe the other kids are laughing at the child. Like that's a consequence too. This kind of goes along with after it, but looking at purpose and consequence are super enlightening once you've taken a couple of days and written down when and where the behavior is happening. So writing down when and where it's happening, again, do it for a couple of days. Patterns will probably jump out at you. Um, pretty much every time I do it, I go into it thinking like, I have no idea why this is happening and it's always random. But then when I do start to write down when and where it's happening, then I begin to see like, oh, well, it's happening during transitions or it's, you know, causing the other kids to laugh or whatever. When I actually write stuff down, it's worth the time that I take because then like 99% of the time patterns will jump out at you. So that's when you can begin to interpret the purpose and consequences. Again, this is for when you've got one kid or maybe just a couple of kids that are exhibiting problem behaviors over and over again. So then once you figure out what the purpose might be, that's when you can make changes to what you're doing. So here's some examples. One year I had a little guy who was pushing and being very physical with the other kids, and when I really sat down and looked at when and where it was happening, I realized that it was happening a lot during transitions or when the kids, so I had like little coat hooks at the back of the room, when they would go back to either get like their book bags or their, um, their literal book bags or their backpacks, th those were all back there, I found that he was pushing. And so what I did is I had him just go either by himself or I reduced the number of kids that were going back at a time. So that's where, noticing where the behavior was happening and when it was happening really helped me figure out how to fix it. Another example, let's say that you've got a kiddo who, um, based upon all the stuff you've written down, you figure out that he's trying to get the other kid's attention. Probably you're not going to be able to make that child not want the other kid's attention, right? That's his internal desire. You can't just make that go away. It doesn't work like that. But what you can do maybe is make him a leader. Maybe he is, um, you know, coming up and leading the class in certain things. Maybe he is, I don't know, like getting to teach the class something. It just depends on the child and what you can do with what you've got. But once you know the purpose, again, that's when you figure out what to do about it. Let's say the child wants your attention. You can give them your attention, right? You may have to give them more attention than you give the other kids, but you can do it in a positive way, right? Like give them lots of positive feedback. Um, have the child maybe help you with something like give them what they're looking for but do it in a way that they don't have to misbehave or um, you know not follow directions in order to get it so that's number two so now we've gone through all five of them just to review they were I focus on my mindset when my kids are um, or when I'm feeling frustrated by my kids and remember that teaching behavior is part of my job number two was taking a scientific approach where I really try to figure out when, where, and why the behavior might be happening. I take a couple of days and jot notes about it, and I learn so much from my notes every time. Patterns typically come out. 
Number three was I try something different. So based upon all of this, or even if it's just like the class as a whole or multiple kids, and I don't do this, I try something different because doing the same thing repeatedly is not gonna get you a different outcome. Number four was I devote time to relationship building because that's really the foundation of it all. Um, Trisha mentioned some things in the comments that were really helpful and I mentioned things just like playing games, student of the day or student of the week, sharing about our weekends, just stuff like that. And then number five was that I do something nice for myself, whether it's, you know, like going shopping or something simple like making time to read in the morning, um, even if it just takes five minutes just so that I can kind of enter the classroom feeling calm and positive. That patience that I bring in with me does definitely affect the kids. So if you do have any other strategies to share, I absolutely would love to hear them. I'd love to hear your feedback. Feel free to comment, even if you're watching this, you know, later on in the day or another day, feel free to comment because I will come back and check these. And if you want kind of to read through the post again, look at more details, I did put the link in the um, little post here. So feel free to comment. Would love for you to share your own thoughts and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching.